Welcome to Getting Geeky. I'm your host, Gina Shrek, and today we're talking about Apple's iOS 5. What is it? Why do we need it? And why should you care? Welcome to Getting Geeky with your host, Gina Shrek, and the occasional special guest, bringing tech tips in bite-sized pieces. She's getting geeky, getting goofy, and yeah, getting random. Welcome to Getting Geeky. Okay, before we get started, I do have to give a shout out, big hug to Neen James, who actually, her and I were chatting and she said, you need to do a Getting Geeky episode on the new iOS 5 updates. There's a whole bunch of them and people just aren't sure of which ones, you know, what, is it really worth upgrading your devices? So Neen, thank you so much. And you know what? I love getting these type of requests via email, Twitter, Facebook, however you want to reach me because it does give me some great content to do these episodes. So thanks, Neen. Okay, so recently Apple rolled out the new iOS 5 for all of their devices, and it was pretty big news. So first I want to just explain what is iOS, because there are a lot of people who use all these acronyms, and we throw them around and nobody really knows what they mean. So I, anything with I, obviously is iPhone, iPad, iTouch, i pod, I, 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 everything else, Apple, anything having to do with Apple, and then anytime you see OS is just operating system. So it might be Windows OS, it might be Android OS, or in this case, iOS. So really it's just the upgrade to iOS 5. There were over 200 or around 200 upgrades to the operating system that affects anyone who has any of those devices. So you might have an iTouch, you might have an old, see we say old, probably bought it last year. Um, iPhone could be the 3GS, could be the 4, could be the new 4S, could be the iPods, iTouch, I, yeah, yeah, I see I can remember them all. Both, iPa uh, both iPads and then also your laptops. So it could be your Mac, MacBook, uh, MacBook Pro, and all of those devices. So this upgrade affected all of them. And again, there's about 200 different upgrades. But I'm going to talk about, I think, the top six that I really think are kind of standout upgrades that really have made a difference. And the first is the cloud. So you've heard of the iCloud. And what's really significant about that is in the past, if we bought anything on our iPods, and maybe we downloaded a song, or maybe on our iPhone we took a picture, maybe on our iPad we um, downloaded an ebook. Well, then when we got back, if we plugged in our iPad, iPod, iTouch, anything to our laptop, and hit synchronize, it would wipe it out. So we had to be careful and we had to uh, make sure that we first backed it up on the computer before we then did the sync. So now with the iCloud, if I buy something on my device, which I did the other night, so the other night I'm sitting in a restaurant and I hear a song and I like the song and so I go to the iTunes store on my iPad and I download the song. Well, because now I have iOS uh, 5 on here, as soon as I open any other of my devices, I go home and open my laptop, the song is in my iTunes library. So that was a great feature. And again, it works with photos, with um, anything that we're storing in. Now, it does not apply to documents. So it's not like Dropbox where you can drop documents in there. It's anything that you're doing, your eBooks, your photos, and you can manually set the settings so that Perhaps you don't want all of your photos that you take on your iPhone to sync, but you can choose which ones you want to go over. So that the iCloud is the um, one that I think is probably the biggest number one um, upgrade feature. Now another really cool feature on the iOS 5 that was an upgrade, I'm going to show you how this works, it's the one finger swipe notifications. Now, if you are on your devices, if you are getting notifications that you have new emails and you have calendar updates and you have maybe Facebook updates and you are getting these little notifications, now what you can do on your, let's make sure that I can get this without um, glare. So now on your device, if you just touch and there's a tiny little black border on the top, you want to make sure you start there. 
and you swipe straight down, you'll see all of the notifications that come up. And so now in one window, I can read all of the updates. The third upgrade that you'll notice on all your devices is the new i newsstand, and actually it's just called newsstand, but on any of your devices you can put the little newsstand, and this will be for your magazines, for your newspapers that you download, and there's a lot of free ones right now. Not a huge selection, but there's some magazines in case you want to load up your little bookshelf, and um, again this would be on your iPhone, your iTouch, or your iPad, so that is a nice feature. Okay, one that I haven't used, I, I tried to force myself to use it, but I use so many other things in my calendar for this, but um, now one of the things that is available on your, um, in the iOS 5 is the reminders. And in your reminders, you can create, you can go in and edit the lists um, so that it is more than just reminders and completed. I think are the two default, reminders and completed. And then I added grocery lists, I added um, to-do lists, and so you can open up and create a little to-do list and check them off and it will sync with your calendar so it will put this if you're using iCalendar which I don't so I'm using Google Calendar and it syncs with all my other Android and iOS devices so but the the um, reminders and that new app is really great okay another great feature that they added was Twitter integration and the integration of Twitter may not seem like a big deal but now if I am um, let's say that I'm opening up I just took a picture and I'm looking at the photo and I want to tweet this photo out now when I hit that share the little the little box with the arrow um, is your share button by the way so anytime you take a photo if you open up the photo and then you'll see it's a little box with an arrow curved arrow and when you open that before, you could share it via email, you could share it um, to send it via a message, especially from your phone. Well, now Twitter is an automatic, um, it's integrated in there. So I can log in the first time and it'll be across the board, not just for photos, but I can also be in uh, on YouTube and I can share a, a video and it'll send the link to Twitter. I can do this from my browser, if I'm in the Safari browser and I see a website or a blog post I really like, Twitter will automatically be integrated in there. One for all of you who have especially the new um, iPhone 4S with a better camera, because if you're on your iPad, it's still kind of a crappy camera. But what's great about a, a couple features that affect both iPad and iPhone users and iTouch, now you can take a picture and edit. There's a little edit button after you take the picture that'll allow you to crop. It has uh, enhanced the photo so you can make it a little better. Um, for if you're on your iPad taking a picture, it's going to take more than that little edit to make that picture look a little better. That's when you go to Instagram or use some of these filter apps because at least it, you can turn them into nicer looking photos and um, that is really helpful. But if you are on using your iPhone, there is a device when, you're, when your iPad is in the lock mode and when you turn it on next to the slide button, you'll notice on your phone you'll have a little camera and that's a quick access to your camera. Sometimes you can't get your camera open and the camera open fast enough to snap a photo before it's too late. Well now you just just um, click on that. But on your iPad, on your iPad you don't have that. On your iPad next to the slider you'll see a little feature that just puts your um, iPad into uh, photo gallery. So it kind of takes all your photos that you've already taken and just displays them. So you don't have the quick access yet on the iPad, but it is available on the iPhones. So all in all, there's a lot to explore with your iOS 5. If you have not upgraded, go into your software updates. And if you have an iPad, you probably have to um, go into that and update. I don't even think you have to. That's another beauty of the cloud. You don't have to connect your devices anymore to do upgrades to your iPad or iPhone, now without even having to synchronize, you can update these devices independently of the mother board, the mother laptop. So that is a great feature in itself. But if you haven't done it yet, go in and update your device to iOS 5 because you know within a week they'll have another upgrade or another phone come out. Who knows? But um, get those upgrades because they are really great and it's really not even that hard, is it? That was easy.
Be sure to follow our Facebook page. We have lots of geeky tips and tools for building your business on facebook.com slash getting geeky right there. Or you can check out our blog, synapseconnecting.com. Let me know if there's anything we can do to help you. And until next time, keep getting geeky.